Hello, in this brief recording we're going to explore the, uh, an issue with isocost and isoquant analysis. In order to uh, understand it, I think the best way is to pose a, a little question. And in our question, what we're asking here is, well, as you can see, a sugar beet refiner has been looking to increase production over the next five years to achieve constant returns to scale but has been told that some additional capital equipment that they've been expecting from a national supplier has been delayed indefinitely. If we assume that there's some substitutability of labour for capital what might be the consequence of these delays for the firm? Use ISO quant and ISO cost analysis to comment on the efficiency implications of this delay. So we're going to use uh, production uh, functions and we're going to uh, put on those sort of expenditure functions to to explore uh, the equilibrium of the firm and disturbances to those equilibriums given this delay. So the first thing to recognize is that we've got um, a, a production function really here we're going to show you the uh, ISO quant lines the ISO quant lines are the le levels of output that can be produced in for this particular firm so this could be uh, uh, x could be a hundred tons per hour if you like and 2x could be 200 tons per hour uh, and the ISO quant here represents all those particular combinations of machines and workers labor in which we could produce 100 tons of sugar beet per hour and this one correspondingly shows all those combinations of machines and labor in which we can produce uh, 200 tons of uh, sugar beet per hour and these are our iso quants the lines of equal quantity that's why we get the the iso in front of the quant iso is greek for equal um, as well as that we have these blue lines and these blue lines represent the prices of the various inputs. So um, what we have here is the relative price of labour over the relative price of machines. And in total, for example, if we spent all our money, all the firm's money, and we only had a certain amount of money, uh, we would be at a point A star uh, if we just used all our spending on labor and likewise if we were at, if we spent all our money on, on machines and nothing on labor we'd be at point a obviously if we had more expenditure the firm had more expenditure we'd be at point b for example uh, if we wanted just machines only with this greater expenditure be no labor or alternatively at b star uh, if we just wanted labor and no machines so these are the iso cost lines they are the um, reflect the relative prices of labor and machines or capital uh, in which we can purchase um, th these machines or labor it so happens that the firm in this particular case um, will maximize its efficiency um, by bringing together technical efficiency as shown by the uh, the iso quant line for example x equals 100 and the iso cost line here a to a star um, at point e or indeed we've got a higher level of output and higher level expenditure e1 so where the slope of the iso quant equals the slope of the iso cost line or again more technically where the marginal rate of technical substitution of labor for machines that's the slope of the iso quant equals the uh, price of labor negative price of labor over the price of machines in this particular instance we're showing constant returns to scale so for example if we're initially at point e having efficiency both productive efficiency and cost efficiency at point e we'd have 10 machines and 20 units of labor uh, in order to produce 100 units of uh, 100 uh, tons of turnip per hour uh, sorry sugar beets per hour and if we um, doubled our inputs from 10 to 20 and 20 to 40 we bid a new equilibrium point e1 where 
we were having a situation where uh, well we have what's called constant returns to scale doubling your inputs leads to doubling your output so here output goes up from 100 to 200 so if the growth path of the firm and that's what we said in this case is sugar beet refiner was looking to achieve constant returns to scale this would be the sort of growth path that it would be on trying to achieve these constant returns to scale but the question of course asked what would be the case if say machines were delayed we had a so the number of machines was not uh, flexible and what we would say there is let's say that they were fixed at 10 machines for this particular time period and that uh, ultimately uh, we're in a, in a short run situation so no longer can we achieve E1 we now can only achieve E so what how can we um, achieve greater uh, output with this fixed number of machines well the, the answer is that we uh, find great difficulty in it we have to expend more money uh, spend more money our costs rise in other words in order to actually achieve this goal so uh, ultimately what this means is that the only way if we've got 10 machines uh, to achieve let's say 200 uh, tons of beetroot sorry 200 tons of sugar beet per uh, hour is to be at this point here uh, and because of the the problems caused by the fixing of uh, machines and that implies that the cost the cost of the firm have increased from B B star to C C star we need more uh, certainly of labor than we would have done before because now we can't substitute away from labor and towards more machines which we could have done if we'd been allowed to have these machines so the ex the expenditure of the firm has risen the costs of the firm have risen and that's a particularly important issue so what we find here is that the long run costs would be much lower than the short run costs and in this case this is because of intervention by um, well by an intervention created by the delays of uh, these machines of course it could have been other things as well we've you know in practical terms you might think about the issues associated with the working time directive in that case what you would have is that there would be a fixed number of hours that the uh, workers could work and that would have an implication but clearly not what would happen is that there'd be a fixing of uh, capital uh, sorry fixing of labor at a certain number of hours and we'd have that red line wouldn't be horizontal it would be vertical and uh, it'd require a slightly different sort of a uh, an analysis i'd have to draw these curves up here to show the implications but the implications are still higher costs so we'll leave it there thanks very much indeed